from the Mountain West and actually start recording. All right, we are yeah, we are starting. We're coming in hot with the Mountain West, our final conference preview. I'm gonna tell you, I'm feeling a bit salty about Liverpool, but we won't talk too much about European football when we got college football back. How's it going? It's going well. Um listen, wanna be transparent here with the people. <clears throat> I make a lot of my college football gambling decisions upon what I've seen with my own eyes. And the Mountain West last year was the conference hands down that I watched the least. Um, So um, I can, you know, add commentary here or there, but really I'm going to let you drive this train, Tony, Um, because. Okie doke. You'll find out. Uh, hey. You'll find out when you're here on the East Coast. You get sleepy. Drinking beers all day long, you get sleepy, and you pass up on a lot of Mountain West football. Well, well, well. bear in mind, one of us is single, one of us isn't. There's a difficult move when your woman's asleep next to you, turning on the fourth quarter of a Mountain West game and kind of trying to root it on without waking her up on the other side of the bed. That's a whole different game. You know, look, I'm alone. Yeah, I'll fall asleep for the first half, but I'll be awake sweating it. I mean, if I'm bad enough, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop back awake and catch the end of it, believe you me. We'll, we'll start. We're, we're going to do the fave contenders dark horse, this whole thing. We're going to do the whole thing like we always do. We'll start with the favorites, Boise State and Fresno State. Boise is probably going to win the conference, even though they're going to have to go on the road to Fresno. They're probably going to win the conference. Bachmeyer is pretty good. He's a pretty darn good Mountain West quarterback, and they got a salty defense. I thought last year, I thought last year Avalos was going to have to grow into the job and adjust, but really he was ready for it. He's a solid coach. I can see I can see this Boise team uh, winning pretty comfortably. The uh, the bookie here, my soon-to-be local bookie, DraftKings here, actually puts them pretty close. 220 for Boise, 240 for Fresno State. I would. I kind of want to. I kind of want to bet the no on Fresno State. I bet you the no on that. That circuit's probably like minus 300 or something. That would feel pretty good. But uh, but yeah, I look at it. I look at it like Boise has been on top of this conference for for a long time through two coaching transitions. They are they are something absurd. They are fifty six and eleven at home since Peterson started. So that's last eleven years. This team is no joke. I mean, and that's year in year out. They got a lot of returning production. I dig it. Fresno's gonna be tough. They got a they got a tough O line. And they and they though they lost their coach, they bring back Tedford, who was the predecessor. So like the whole Bulldog system is gonna stay intact. Um I wish you would I wish you had given Fresno State more of a chance. They played tough football last year. Under Dubar, they were a tough team. The thing about Boise that makes me scared to bet on them um, in this futures market is that Hank Bachmeyer, yeah, he's he's good, but he's gotten like concussed a million times and he's hurt. And their offensive line has continued to be quite porous. Um, uh, you, you can't be in a position when you have a quarterback who is like chronically hurt or exposed to being hurt. It's sort of like Michael Penix in Washington. Like he's a he is a good quarterback, but you can't trust him to not get hurt. Um, I just don't trust this quarterback to be standing upright um, well, well, every, well, hang on. every game of the season. Hey, hang on now. 
because I feel like he started mo- every game last year. Did Bakhtar get knocked out of a game at some point? Is that what you mean by concussed? Because he no no he had thirteen starts last year. Yeah, he started he every game. He started. You know? He started every game. He got concussed. I think twice in 2020, okay. but he is I chronically see. getting hit. He's banged up. He started every game, but he's he gets banged up in every single game. No, I feel you. I mean, the the O line is more experienced this year, right? But does that mean they've gotten much better? That's yeah, that's an open question. Um, I'm I'm gonna pencil in some improvement on the offensive line. So like, but uh, but he's gonna yeah, he's still gonna take some sacks. Like, you know, if he took if he took uh, 27 sacks last year, it's probably going to take, you know, 21 this year. Get luckily, hit. luckily for them, if they're – that game at Oregon State to begin the year is going to be tough. Um, but luckily after that, they have a few weeks to sort of – clean up anything that, that they might need to um, on the road versus New Mexico, who stinks, versus UT Martin from the SES, and then on the road at UTEP, who, you know, is now a decent team, but um, a serious class below um, Boise State. Boise State, State so, is going to, yeah, they're going to make the minors very sad. Yeah. And then those home games for San Diego State and, and Fresno are, are really – Oh, they host the Bulldogs. That's good. Yes, they host the Bulldogs. Very good. They yeah. should win both of those on the Smurf turf. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, this team yeah. is going to start 5-1. and one. Maybe they'll beat Oregon State. Who knows? But this team is going to start 5-1 and one here. That's pretty good. By week, they could handle Air Force. Home to Colorado State. Who, who fired Adavio? What, just because Adavio lost every game? That's not a reason to fire someone. <laughs> no, stop it. That's not a reason to fire someone. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then BYU, the toughest game of the year. Ooh, they're probably going to lose to BYU. At Nevada, easy win at Wyoming. Wyoming's rebuilding, too. Home to Utah State, rival, rivalry game, but whatever. Boise State usually wins it. They'll probably win it. Yeah, this is looking – doesn't this look like a 10-win season to you? What is the win total for Boise? I kind of have, have a hunch it's going to be nine and a half. I'm guessing eight and a half. Um, but, yeah, as you identified, probably – Eight. If you came out nine, what do you know? What's the difference? Hey, um, you know – uh, three out of their four toughest opponents, San Diego State, Fresno State, Utah State, and Air Force, three out of four of those are at, at home. Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I agree that I think the schedule is really advantageous. Um, again, I don't watch a lot of Mountain West football, um, so I just don't really feel confident with, with any stake, uh, with, with any, like, real opinion that I, I may um, vomit out of my mouth. Um, but clearly the, the, the schedule is real, lines up. Uh, quite well for them, as long as they can survive um, at Oregon State. And you're right, like they're a team that has the ability to to win that game outright on the road. You know it, absolutely. All right. Well, we've got our faves down, and I mean, I don't. I guess I don't feel comfortable telling people to lay the wood, but I I have my doubts about Fresno State. Uh, because, well, I got my doubts about Fresno State, first of all, because they're going to lose to Boise State, but they would also have trouble with with either of our contenders, and that's Air Force and San Diego State nipping at the heels. Air Force has the longest tenure coach in the conference, Troy Calhoun, in his 15th year here. You know, it's a service academy. They're running the triple option, but – Hazik Daniels can throw it a bit, a little bit, you know. He's got a he's and 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 that's and that's kind of why Air Force won ten games last year, is because he could throw it a little bit when they need it. And you know, the defense disciplined as fuck. They you know they're in the Air Force. They you know they fucking get up in the morning, do what they're told. 
This this is this is a tough spot for them though, because they gotta they gotta go and they gotta play. They gotta they they got they get Boise at home, so that's good. I guess no no, they get a buy. I was gonna say they have to play Army the week after they play Boise, but they at least get a buy. I was gonna say that would be a tough spot for the commander and chief trophy. Falcon. Yeah, we didn't really Falcon's got go on. We didn't really talk much about uh Fresno. Why do you think everyone likes them so much? Is it just because of the the game versus Oregon and UCLA? Like what why is there this much love? Like J J Kaner throws for a lot of yards, but um t- t- tell me why everyone loves Fresno State so much. Like to me, I see a loss at Hawaii. That is totally no heavens, no. <laughs> uh, no, no. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. First of all, that game at Hawaii last year, right? That was um, that was that, there was there was something wrong with that game, right? Yeah, Fresno turned over the ball six times in that game. They lost mm. every fumble. Now maybe they shouldn't have fumbled so much, but they lost every fumble in that game. And they still only lost by three. That was, yeah, that was a bad one. That was a bad one on the island. But, but, uh, but, but look, they still, they still got, yeah, they still got a good senior quarterback. They still got uh, competitive guys on the line of scrimmage, and they still got a good coach. So it's like, it feels like that's. They feel like they're right. We're we're right to expect them to win the West Division. Mm, now, if they're such a good team, why were they? Um, who did they, I guess that loss to Boise kicked them out of the championship game, right? Yes. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, really, it was the loss to Hawaii, the Hawaii. both, right? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, um, I, and I do, ex- and I do expect Boise to put something of a number on it. Like, don't get me wrong, you know, like definitely expect them to yeah. put something of a number on it. They do, you know, they have to play at Boise, um, but they have a relatively easy schedule in conference. Like, they play San Diego State at home. They play w- mm. Wyoming at home, which is a hard place to play. Their road trips within conference, and they play Hawaii at home, so they don't need to go to the island. Um, and their San Jose State, some people think, are a dark horse. I have no fucking idea. But they also play them at home. And their road games are New Mexico, who stinks, UNLV, who stinks, and Nevada, who's going to stink this year. Um, so they have a super soft schedule, softer than, than Boise State. So they don't play Utah State. They don't play Air Force. Um, so just looking at the schedule a little bit more, I think I understand why they're basically neck, neck and neck with Boise State um, for the uh, conference high odds. And they also have a good defense. Like we, you know, you know, like they, and they, they, they got a solid, they got a solid crew. Like, how many times did they let you get over thirty last year? One, um, two, let's three. Look at that. One, two, three, four times they let you get over thirty last year. Like, yeah, they got a good defense. That's Fresno, that's yeah. solid with or playing Oregon and UCLA. <clears throat> but you know? in fairness, that Oregon game was after their upset um, in the shoe. And then when did this UCLA game happen? Definitely happened, obviously, not immediately after LSU, but what happened? I think they had a big win. Oh, it was after the LSU win. So there were two letdown mm. spots that those Pac-12 teams were in. And then the Bulldogs came in. Ruff, ruff. That makes sense. Rawr. That makes sense. <laughs> that is. And Oh, and USC gets revenge. That's right. We have a revenge matchup here. And it is inconvenient to have to fly to Connecticut the week before you go on the road to Boise. 
Yeah, but you can put it. You can put in your scrubs. That's true. Like, Jake, 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 oh Jake shit! Hander we never did. We never did the independent. We can we oh, can go over them, uh, before before week week zero. Okay, then fair enough. Uh, but yeah, I can no. I see why people are are stoked on Fresno. But I yeah, I feel like Fresno. They you know they could lose. They could lose. Um, they could definitely lose to the Aztecs. I did kind of think of this as a bit of a, yeah, I can, yeah, it's kind of like, I kind of put them here because you have to consider them contenders, but I don't trust Brady Hoke turning over this whole offensive line. I don't think these boys are all just going to be ready to play from the jump. Like, and they kind of have to play. You know, they got to go on the road to Arizona. Rather, no, they got to play Arizona home. Then they got to go on the road to Utah. And then they got to play Toledo before they go on the road to Boise. It's a rugged start for the Aztecs. Things can get really real for them. They've been good under Hoke. Um, like, Hoke, like, Hoke's record here is no joke. Um, unfortunate run. But it's not. Like, he's fucking, um, like, what is he, 26 and 9? Yeah. He's doing pretty freaking good. Um, I won't. I don't want to rule out the Aztecs, but I don't trust them to have a great offense in front of the Virginia Tech transfer Burmeister. I don't see it happening. I know that you didn't care for him when he was in the ACC. Yes, he was not a ACC caliber quarterback, but in the Mountain West. More at a different level of, of competition. Oh, you like, oh you if, think this is going to be water finding its level? Yes, maybe. Yeah, it doesn't. Maybe. It doesn't really need to be water finding its level. If they are able to score thirty points a game with this defense, they're going to be really nasty. Um, I don't. For both San Diego State and Utah State, the representative in this conference championship game last year, like. Their odds are pretty juicy to win the conference. I think it's extremely disrespectful to this team, which has a like a statistically fantastic defense in a conference that's really not known for great defensive play. They do. They always do. That's true. Hoke is a good defensive guy. You got to give him credit for that, if nothing else. That's true. I and Michigan usually had a, a good defense when he was on Michigan. It was they never had a quarterback. Now, you know, Bur- now Burmeister, I'm... Burmeister can use his legs. Like he's not, and I don't think there's anyone on the the, the wide receiving core who can like is, is a real game changer. But just having someone that's like cromulent as a QB could be a game changer for for the Aztecs. We'll see. I question I question whether this whether this is gonna work out, whether this is gonna be seamless. It could it could be an ugly start for Coach Hope's side. We'll see. I, I kind of actually have more faith in a team I listed as a dark horse, a team that pantsed me many times last year, the Utah State Aggies. Blake Anderson in his second year here, he showed me in his first year that I don't know shit about shit. This team covered a lot, and they won a lot. They won They won the fucking conference. <laughs> okay? Now, now, now they ain't going to defend necessarily, but I have to recommend taking 9-1 to one that they might. Because every step of the way, I refuse to believe in Logan Bonner, and every step of the way, the kid was fantastic. I they bring back basically the the offense that did it to me last year. The defense probably takes a step back. They lose a lot of they lose a lot of their top tacklers on defense, but the offense is probably going to be a bit better. So we're going to call that a wash. They have to play Bama, so they have to be very careful about that. And then they also are on the road at BYU. Another tough game. 
but the schedule the schedule levels out at at Colorado State at Wyoming bye week New Mexico at Hawaii San Jose State before that very tough very tough season finale at Boise like they could get on a nice little run there into the end they have a legitimate shot at winning the conference that's why they're my dark horse. And also, yeah, because nine. I re- and also because I refuse to do it again. I'm not going to step in front of this team again like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, nine nine to one is is disrespectful. Um, and in conference, they to me they only have three games where they could conceivably lose: Air Force at home, on the road at Colorado State, and at Boise State. The rest of their in conference games should be winnable. You you know something they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna run train on the Rams, all right. Air Force is tough. Yeah, home to Air Force Air is a Force tough is game, tough. and that's the week after BYU. That that is a tough back to back. Yeah, we're gonna find out what this team is made of in those in those meetings. I the, oh yeah, what a schedule. The Good on the them. negative, the negative on Utah State though, Tony, is that. They have two wideouts that are now playing in the NFL that combine for um, over 2,400 yards. Now, now, did they have those? Did they have those yards because of Logan Bonner and playing bad defense? Probably not, because they are on NFL teams. They, you know what? They definitely need, yeah. They definitely need to get the guys they brought in to be good. <laughs> they definitely, you, you got it. You got. You make a very good point there. Like they're missing a fucking receiver who got seventeen hundred fucking yards. So that guy needs to be replaced probably by a bunch of guys, maybe two guys. Don't bet. Yeah, you know, that's the, that's the thing. You don't just go around betting a lot on these preseason bets. You only want to bet a little bit. You don't want to be desperately rooting on Utah State. Mm, no. Um, and, like, they've gotten a couple guys – uh, a couple transfers in, but no one of like a, a real significant note. Um, they have a kid from Alabama um, who transferred in, mm-hmm. like that's Xavier maybe... Williams. That's, yeah. yeah, that was an exciting addition for them. Absolutely. But otherwise, um, a, an uneventful um, off season for for the Aggies. But yeah, the the nine to one is just ridiculous. It's just so disrespectful. Like they kicked a tremendous amount of ass last year, and one of the oh, few games that hang I on. watched and them. And they got and, and they got a kid from a junior college who's built like fucking Metcalf. This kid is six six two twenty. What if this? What if they did replace everything with this Justin McGriff and Xavier Williams? What if it was even Steven? How would that feel? Yeah, I mean, it, nine to one is disrespectful. Like I, I have made a very, very small bet uh, in the futures market in this conference, which I will reveal at some point. But Utah State is probably, if I watch more Mountain West football, is probably where I put my money. It makes no sense that they are nine to one. I think there's some like post game no, win make, expectancy it, crap. No, it makes no, it makes some sense. They it, viewed in a certain light. They were lucky to cover all those numbers. They caught every break of the game. They did. Um, so like, so like, I understand why everyone's like, no, 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 they're gonna bounce back. You know, they're gonna go the other way. But maybe not. Maybe it's more like they're better than we thought they were. And yeah. like the 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 quarterback is is a you know he's got moxie. They got a yeah. good team. Maybe those two things like, can be true at the same time. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. Well, there's that too. Like maybe they're still being undervalued, and also they got too lucky last year. Yeah, I, yeah, I buy that. Now, now I had to put Colorado State down in the also Rams category because I thought it was insane for them to fire their head coach after what happened last year. Sure, they lost every game, but they were all tough spots. At Utah State, Boise State, at Wyoming. Wyoming was much better last year than this year. Wyoming's team last year would probably be favored by two touchdowns over this year's team. So again, uh, Air Force at, on the island in what was a close game. And then, and then Nevada in what must have been Carson Strong's farewell. Yes. Yeah. Now, now that's that. Those are all losable games. There's no reason to fire your coach for that. Like that's that 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 kind of move as a program just says panic to me. Just just screams panic. They bring in Jay Norvell, which I guess is a fine replacement. He's had success in the Mountain West before, but why are we changing up schemes and changing everything up? Is that, why is that the cure for what ails us here? I don't know. It's, could the Rams make because, a bowl? They could make a bowl. No. Could, no they could. Hang on. But I, look, I agree with you. I'm not about to tell people to bet on that. But, I mean, they could make a bowl. But I'm not going to bet on it. And what do you mean, no, definitely not? Okay. So they lose to Michigan. They could beat Middle Tennessee. All right. Ooh, that is the toilet bowl of Saturday, September 10th. Ooh, <laughs> that's that the, the toilet, toilet bowl. bowl. <laughs> that was such a toilet bowl. <laughs> the least interesting matchup. Oh, boy. Boy, oh, what? boy. That's a good game. You got a couple, you got a couple of interesting veteran coaches out there. You got um you you got two teams that are probably going to be zero and one, so they're both going to want to win this game, you know. Now uh, now I'm not going to now I'm not going to lie I'm not going to lie to you about the the quarterback, um the quarterback Millen. I don't know anything about him. He transferred in with Norvell. That's all I know about. Him. If he were very good. Maybe this Rams team has gone a run. But, like, I don't know. I don't see it. I feel like, could they beat Washington State on the road? Doesn't feel right to me. No. Hell so they no. Pro- no so, they probably, so they probably start 2-2. Two and two. Then they yeah. go and visit Nevada in a game they have to win. They can win. Call it 3-2. and two. Home to Utah State, call it 3-3. Three and three. Yeah. Home to Hawaii on revenge. Four toss and up. three. Toss up. Toss up. At Bo- Give, him <laughs> Give him a half. Give him a half. Boise State. I refuse. Do, who, do you know who the coach of Hawaii is? Um, fucking, Ch- fucking Tommy Chong. Kimmy Chang. Cheech and Kimmy Chong. Chang? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> is it? Are you sure it's not Tommy Chong? Damn it. It's Timmy it Chang. <laughs> at any rate, it's the lead four and four at San Jose State. I'll give it to you. This is that's the kind of a, that's kind of the crux. If they're going to go bowling, they probably have to beat the Spartans on the road. They could take care of Wyoming at home, but they're going to lose that Air Force. Actually, no, take care of Wyoming. Yeah, and New Mexico. That's six wins. This team could go bowling. But they probably will end up on five, won't they? Yeah, yeah. I I think the the Hawaii game is a toss up. Um, Wyoming could be really bad, but at that point in the year, they might have gelled. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a secret. The over five and a half is juice. It's over five and a half minus one forty five. Tell you a secret. They are favored to go bowling. Okay. Think about that okay. for a second. Think about that. Okay. Let that let that sink in. 
It's, that it's sunk in. in. It's sunk in. They're not going bowling. So you're saying it you want to take the under in. you you want to take the under five and a half plus twenty five that. Let's walk through this again. Okay. All right. So let's Michigan, have they're gonna lose. Sure let's thing. walk okay, so they're gonna lose at Michigan. Middle Tennessee at home, they could win. I'm gonna give that I'll give I'll give them a win there, a favorable win. But that means then I'm gonna take that from someplace else. But okay, so let's let's say win versus middle Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Or or rather, okay, let's do let's do the upside. Right, They're, let's do their ceiling. Their ceiling is win Middle Tennessee, win Sacramento mm-hmm. State, on the road at Nevada, um, n- no Utah State, Hawaii they win, no uh, Boise State, at San Jose State they win, Wyoming they win, New Mexico they win. So that's their ceiling is is seven wins. To me, their floor is lose to Middle Tennessee State. Lose on the road, beat Sac, beat Sac State. Lose on the road versus Nevada. Let's say they win versus Hawaii at home. Then let's give them win at San Jose State, win versus Wyoming, and then win versus New Mexico. That's that's five. Okay, so maybe maybe the, the sports book is right to have that juiced. Like if that's the, the if that's the, the the floor is five wins. Then yes, it probably should be juiced over five and a half. Okay. There. Yeah. All right. All right. So we, that, yeah, there we go. But I don't know there shit about San Jose State, so I can't really. Well, I just assumed in that hey, scenario that that's a win for them, but it's probably well, not. Yeah. Yeah. That is no. It's no. You should up. not jump. You should not jump to that assumption. Yeah. Definitely, it's going to be closer to a toss up. I would. I would think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I okay. First of all, let's just the the spread was two last year. Okay, the spread was two in Fort Collins. So let's just go ahead and assume we'll just flip that right around. It'll be two here in San Jose. So yeah, it's going to be a close spread. Um, with assuming. Yeah, assuming we bring in the Hawaii transfer and he wins the job, Cordero, um, it'll be a different quarterback for the Spartans. I don't know if it's a better quarterback. It's actually it's actually my question in the quarterback transfer is why I got the Spartans down as an also ran. Well, I don't see him as a team that's probably going to win the conference. Could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong about this, Cordero, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um <laughs> It's probably also a function of, the, you know, they're not having a lot of continuity in the O line either. But I kind, of, I guess, yeah, that's why I imagine Cordero's is going to be running around back there and not necessarily doing a lot. Um, we'll see. They they kind of had some run bad last year because they 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 had bad fumble luck. So like. That's kind of that's kind of a thing that's supposed to bounce back. They could have went bowling last year. Don't get hung up on the five win season. You know, like they could have. Yeah, a lot of a lot of close games here, but on, but on both sides of the point, um, losing a lot of close games, winning a lot of close games. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, their their schedule is tough, dude. I mean, you have at Auburn, you can get banged up there, and then at Wyoming, at Fresno State, at San Diego State, at Utah State, they have a road trip to um, Corvallis. They should win that game, but you know, a lot of travel uh, sprinkled in through this, and like they have their easiest. Their easiest games are at home, um, you know. And so I think this is going to be a, a very tough season for them. Very, very tough season. This is a hard schedule. It kind of is. 
It's kind of yeah. yeah. It's kind like, of a tough one. They could the lose. Yeah. They could lose at Wyoming in altitude. Come week four again, the Pokes could gel at that point. The Pokes. Wait, who do you think the Sims they Spartans are playing? Wyoming. They're all. Oh, the Wyoming, of course. Oh shit, they're on the road at Wyoming, of course. Why did I miss that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I was no, I didn't see. You know, I can't read anymore. In my old mm-hmm. age, my my eyes have grown quite weary. Yeah, that's right. At Wyoming is tough. That is a tough road game. That is, I mean, I don't know. We'll see what happens to them. They, but, but yeah. It might, yeah, it might not be smooth sailing for the Spartans. They got a good defense, though. Like, honestly, they probably have a defense that's like a notch below San Diego State. But they're probably like right there. Sort of. Like, that second level down. I, like, I bet you their defense is as good as Boise. It's just like Boise has a better offense. Are you talking about San Jose State now? or uh, mm-hmm. wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm just talking about like Spartans last couple years. Just talking about Spartans mm-hmm. like last couple years, like last three years, you know. Like I guess, yeah, since we've been doing the pop. Like the Spartans probably have about as good a defense as the Broncos, just not the offensive performance. Who knows? Maybe this dual threat Hawaiian is a good idea, this, this flying Hawaiian. Let's uh, let, let's talk about Craig Bull's side. We can talk about Wyoming because they're right there as also ran or they're bordering on and back. Well, this is, a, this is kind of a rebuilding year. We're not bringing back a lot of talent on either side of the ball. We're bringing in a random quarterback Peasley. Not inspiring. Not inspiring. <laughs> he is he is not well regarded, this Peasley. And he does not seem to have a lot in the way of uh of guys to throw it to or hand it off to. This looks like a rebuilding year for Wyoming. Starting at Illinois, not gonna work out for you. Coming home to Tulsa, probably going to lose that. They get FCF, Northern Colorado, that's a win. Air Force is a loss. At BYU is a loss. This is getting rough. Yeah, they're they're not going to be gelled. They're going to be one in four when San Jose State comes here. They're going to be vulnerable, and they're going to lose that game too. They go <laughs> one in five. Yeah, actually, yeah, this team is on. This is not a backable situation. The Pokes. Will they come together toward the end of the season? I mean, look, I'm going to say this. They call him Craig Bowl because that's where he takes this team, right? He took this team to what, four bowls in the past six years? Something like that. Like he's – wait, let me count this out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, four in the last six. So, like, this team will be back on the upswing. I just don't know if this is the year for him. It's going to start out really rough. It's going to it's going to start out two and five here, and then you have the bye week. It's going to be tough. Now, yeah. Wyoming is one of the few Mountain West teams I actually watch. I don't know why, but I bet and watch a decent amount of Wyoming football. Um, this has been a team that been on defense, very stout since Craig Bowl has been the head man, but body on offense to say the least. Um, and this year that offense is going to be even spottier. So yeah, they bring in this guy, what was his name? Brad Paisley, Brad Peasley, Sean Peasley, and, what's his and name? Andrew Peasley who I okay. take it lost lost his starting job to Logan Bonner. Yeah, he was a backup at in at Utah State. But all the other quarterbacks that have taken snaps at Wyoming are gone. They have no depth in the quarterback room. Sean Chambers, the QB, out. Levi Williams transferred to the Utah State. Okay, mm-hmm. so they have zero experience in the QB room. 
running the football. Xavier Valade is transferred to Arizona State. Um, Levi Williams. So I, I'm going to go through the, their top four rushers last year. So Zavon Valade transferred to Arizona State. Titus Swen returns. Levi Williams, as I just said, transferred to Utah State. And Sean Chambers has graduated. So they are losing, uh, do this math really quickly, about 1,500 yards, uh, rushing yards. Um, and 14 rushing touchdowns, okay, from, from last year's production. And they lose Isaiah Nair, who transferred to Texas. Apparently he got, he's hurt and out, out for the year potentially. But he transferred to Texas. Um, mm. Now, Isaiah Nair only had 878 yards receiving last year, but that was 12 touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Guess how many? Guess how many touchdowns the team scored through the air outside of Isaiah Nair's reception? Guess how many touchdowns? You're kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> are you are you gonna fucking try to tell me some shit like that was all the touchdown? It wasn't all of them, was it? It was three. Like, they were, three. They only had three, three touchdowns. <laughs> Son of yeah. a gun, they really? had fifteen. They the, had fifteen receiving touchdowns, and Isaiah Nair was twelve of them. So of the twenty nine touchdowns that were scored last year, we have twelve. Thirty of them are not are not returning. You know, yeah, we're gonna yeah we're gonna chalk this up to rebuilding. And wait, and Chad Muma was drafted and will be on the Jaguars. He had 142 tackles last year, right? And he was also their interception leader with three interceptions. So this team is going to be bad, 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 bad. That being said, like I bet on Illinois in this game. I bet it minus nine when it was available. It's now minus 10, minus 10 and a half, depending on the day and the shop. Illinois shouldn't be laying 10 versus anyone, should they? I don't know. I was kind of like, <laughs> we could probably just lay this clean up to 14, right? We could just be like, these guys are fucked. That's that's another way of, of thinking about it. Like, I actually I actually really like that, Tony. Because, like, if if Illinois is covering this 10, they're they're probably putting up – they're covering, like, 17 points. We should be looking for an all for an alt line week week one. Like it's either the Cowboys somehow upset the Illini outright <laughs> at home, or Illinois and Brett Bielema just bully ball them to hell, and the Cowboys like you know only have a hundred yards of of passing. That and that sounds a lot likelier. Than, yeah. than dealing with getting fired instantly for losing to this yeah. team. Yeah. yeah. That, all right. That's looking no, that's for an fair. alternate line is is pretty sharp. But that's good on you, T. Good on you. Yeah. Right. We got to get there. Um, now, I feel like New Mexico is another rebuilding team. Actually, really, the rest of the teams we're going to talk about they're all rebuilding. Nevada, UNLV, all of these teams. Hawaii, especially all these teams, like they they are, and I don't know what rebuilding means because they were never built, right? I don't know when the last time the Lobos went to a bowl. They, they have never been in a bowl since we've done this shit. I can promise you that. No. I would have remembered. I would remember the Lobos. I think that's a great nickname for a team. Um, Danny Gonzalez, five and fourteen here, entering his third season. So um. So uh, and and that was three wins last year. So that's an improvement track, two to three, fifty percent improvement. Um, fun fact: has beaten Wyoming in both meetings. What mm. do you know? 
He owns mm. Craig Bowl. What do you know about that? Um, mm. We've got we've got a we got a Kansas transfer. That's never good. Kansas transfer coming <laughs> no. in as quarterback. Not ideal to be bringing him in. Uh, you know, looks like looks like we bring back some guys on defense though. We bring back some guys on defense. Um, oh, and Rocky Long is the defensive coordinator for the Lobos. What about that? That's a good guy to have. <laughs> See, no, yeah, we hey. don't. There's we let's skip let's skip the Lobos. There's nothing to say about this team. They're not good. They the they're reason, not a bet on team week to week. The reason the Aztecs have a good defense is because after for many years Rocky Long laid that foundation. Like he he he's, he's sort of the granddaddy of that program. But but fair enough. They're probably not going to uh cover cover themselves in glory. The UNLV actually might have a little bit to them. This I'll say this. This is definitely Coach Arroyo's best team in his third year here. <laughs> I will say that for him. He, there's no question that this UNLV team would be favored by double digits over last year's team and would be favored by like 24 or something over the team he inherited coming into that Rona season. The team that that, that year he went winless, 0-6. I, I kind of feel like – I kind of feel like they bring in a young man who couldn't win the job at Tennessee – they bring back an entire O line that has to get better because they I mean they've got a lot of experience on that line now. They have to play with more cohesion. I can't imagine that the pass defense is gonna get any worse. They've got to get better. So it's like I don't know, they can't go bowling though. Can they go bowling? Let's have a look at this schedule. Let's assume the, they beat Idaho State. Let's just assume that. Then at Cal's a loss. Home to North Texas is a big game. Let's give it to them. At mm-hmm. Utah State, they're probably going to lose that. Home to New Mexico, that's a big game. That's kind of a toss up. Let's give it to them. Three and two. At San Jose State, they played the Spartans close last year, but I don't see it. Three and three home to Air Force, not going to happen. Three and four at the Irish, three and five. Bye week at San Diego State, three and six. Home to Fresno, three and seven. On the island, I don't see it. All right, they're probably not going to go bowling this year. Unless unless they can pull that upset at Utah State, that would change the whole season. If they start at three and one, Upsetting Utah State, then there would they'd, there'd be a little snowball going on there. I wonder this Harrison Bailey. He's a big kid, six five, two thirty. He's a big kid. He might, maybe he is the quarterback we've been waiting for here in the desert. Maybe next year. Maybe next year for so, this team to go bowling. I bet uh, twenty bucks on this team to win the, the conference championship at a hundred. What odds did you get? hundred to one. <laughs> hundred to one. LB, huh? Yeah. Uh. Um, so listen, did I watch UNLV play last year? No, not for a second. But what impresses me is they had a lot of close games that just slipped through their fingers and against good teams. Okay, they almost beat Fresno State. They lost 38-30, to a team that is now, you know, considered a potential favorite, um, ranked number 22 in the country, or was ranked 22 in the country at the, at the time, and a potential favorite um, to win the conference. They lost 24-17 to versus UTSA, who won their conference. They lost 28-24 to versus Utah State, who won the conference. Um, they lost 27 to 20 versus San Jose State. Close game. Uh, and then they lost 28 to 20 versus San Diego State, a team that was represented that that represented their division in the conference championship game. You know, 
like a couple a couple bounces go their way and they're they're bowl eligible. Now this schedule is really fucking tough. They have to play Cal and Notre Dame, as you identified. Like that's that's tough on the road. North Texas won't be a walk in the park, and they're going to play all the, you know, except outside of Boise, all of the, um, you know, favorites and contenders in the conference. Um, so this is a tough schedule, but if, if there's a flyer, if there's, if, you know, if, if, if that team's going to have a magical season, I think it could possibly be UNLV. And like Arroyo is at least a decent coach. He's not terrible. Um, no, he no, on he's the, on definitely the side of the ball. He he's a he's a and and he's a good leader too. He knows how to connect with these young men. He was a high school coach before this job. He was the coach of Gorman, the very tough high school team. Uh, I no, he's won my respect, and he's definitely won the respect of you know what 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 community there is of beleaguered UNLV fans. <laughs> And you identify like Harrison Bailey, yeah, I mean he he suffered um at Tennessee, um, but like he you know, I think he I think he came on board the year that Garantano started. Like he was in Jeremy Pruitt's final season when the when the whole team was collapsing. Okay, and and like the boosters wouldn't end up betraying Jeremy Pruitt, so he he was there mm-hmm. at a bad time, and then and then he was back up to Hennon Hooker, who threw for like twenty five touchdowns or twenty seven touchdowns and three interceptions, like just a fantastic quarterback. Mm-hmm. Like obviously he's getting he's getting pushed out, um, like he could be quite talented, um, so I think there's a lot of potential up upside for this team. Are they going to win the conference? No. They, are they going to go bowling? Probably not. Um, but if there's a team I'm going to take, take a flyer on, I'll, I'll take this team. I I don't I don't disagree with throwing a bet on them. I do disagree with the hundred to one odds. I would like to be seeing a little bit more than that, but that's yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? Every, everyone loves you know to just put down a nice. Twenty dollar bet, and just receive back a quick two thousand. Okay, thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> Nevada and yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you, no. UNR though. That's uh, unless unless I've also taken the mismeasure of this new quarterback Illingsworth. This is a team that's probably a year away also. They're not really going to make a lot of noise this season. I kind of feel like I kind of feel like Norvell left it covered bare a bit. He kind of screwed these guys. Yes, he did. Um, Ellingsworth is yeah. not good. Um, he was a significantly below average backup at Oklahoma State. Um, mm. If we look at the Nevada Wolfpack, we have from players who were on the team last year, we have, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 14 kids who have transferred out who were on the team last year, and I think all mm. but two of them are, are remaining in the Mountain West. So these are not kids who are like, okay, we're not good oh my, enough to play at this level. Let's step down oh to the Oh, my fucking FCS. God. No, because North Bell took not all kids. the good ones. God <laughs> yeah. damn it. And they're also, not kids, they're also not kids who are going to play at, 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 for depth at Alabama either. Like These are kids that have just given up on the school and the program. That's a bad sign. That's a very bad sign. That's a very bad sign. Well, because well, and it's very bearish for Ken Wilson. It makes it sound like Ken Wilson, you know, he can't hold nobody. Nobody wants to stay to play for him. Like, mm, 
Yeah, it's gonna be that's gonna be a tough road to hoe for this team. They, you know, they probably should beat New Mexico State, but they might lose to the Texas State Bobcats at home. Now that game is quite interesting. So I think that game opened up at like 14 and it's nine right now. That's a huge dog to make the Bobcats. That's crazy. That's a huge yeah. dog. That's huge. <laughs> yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. It, yes, 14. it really got why would you, down. Why would they open that? Anyway, okay. But even nine, I'd take the nine before I laid it. Um, I, if you had asked me to guess the spread, I was going to guess like UNR six, something like that. Five and a half, six. I'm kind of surprised by nine. Um, but, and that's only because Reno is at altitude. I would have had it at le- like on just the pure power rating. I don't think UNR is more than a field goal for the Bobcats necessarily. I don't see it that way. So it's like, but I give them a little extra because it's a trip. The trip up from low lamp, low lying Texas, fucking Reno. Oh hey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got I got my my wires crossed here. So Nevada, New Mexico State opened up at fourteen, fourteen and a half, and now it's at nine, nine and a half. Interesting. Maybe I'm missing something about the independence. We haven't looked at the independence yet. Um, maybe I'm missing something about these Aggies. I thought these Aggies were supposed to kind of suck. Like I thought this was supposed to be like a kind of a kind of a three win team or some shit. I think the Texas State Nevada line. Let me look at this real quick. Um, the Texas State Nevada line opened up at about nine nine and a half, and now it's at. Aha! Uh-huh. Very nice. That makes sense. Yeah. That's probably so about that's probably been, about break even. But there's, yeah, there's been significant line movement for for both of those games, the week zero and the week one games. So that's why I got my wires crossed. Sorry. No, I got you. And yeah, absolutely, we can. Yeah, you know what? That's we'll see. We we might be on that five catch money line in week one. That could be a thing that we're involved in. It's going to be tempting. What about New Mexico State money line, dude? You know, the, Jerry Kill, the the new coach for the Aggies, well, we'll talk about them, but I, he's he, he has a habit of dying. He likes to collapse on the sideline, and I think it's a big distraction. <laughs> No, yeah, he's I mean, died like, like four times already. Are you aware of this? Like he's had like four heart attacks during the course of games. It's ridiculous. I, that's I don't not think good. it's a. I don't think it's a plot. No, and they're a, New Mexico State is a really bad team. They only beat UMass and South Carolina State last year, but. Uh, but this Nevada yeah. team might have no talent on it. Like, if they're both two talentless games, two, two talentless teams, like, why not take the home team to just win outright? I mean, well, you know, why not take the underdog and multiply your money? That's the way I look at it. You know, take that, yeah, take that, take that underdog. I hear you. Now, we got one more team left, and you were right. It's not Tommy Chong. Timmy <laughs> Chang, the coach of the Rainbow Warriors. Timmy Chang steps in um, after, what's his name? The Betrayer. Grant. Todd Graham. Todd Graham. Graham, yeah. Todd yeah. Graham. Yeah. yeah, Todd Graham. He's... He after he wore out his welcome here. Um, what did what did the kid say? The kid said Todd Graham destroyed my love of football. 
<laughs> that was the funniest fucking shit in the world. <laughs> But the but the sick part is, is there was no way out if you're a Rainbow Warriors fan. Because, like, imagine if Rolo had stayed on and tried to fight the Hawaii coronavirus rules. Like, either way, <laughs> either way, they were going to have turmoil and they were going to arrive at 2022 in this spot. Rebuilding yeah. with an empty cupboard with a first-year head coach. Like, it was always going to come to this. And they 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 have a lot of question marks. They have question marks at every level of the defense. We question this Camon Cooper. He was he's a transfer from Washington State. I mean, yeah. maybe, but probably not going to be good. We, you know. You know, actually, the only unit with any depth and experience looks like the offensive line. The offensive line has more than 100 career starts on it. They they can maybe try and hold this shit down a little bit for this team, give this team a little stability. My goodness. Well, hey, at, did you know that Timmy Chang is the passing leader for the Rainbow Warriors? I knew that he was a quarterback before um, when we were in high school, but uh, no. Okay. I didn't know that. So yeah, yeah, he is their great. He is their greatest quarterback. So so he probably will not get fired if he only wins one game. So which wow. may happen. He may only beat Duquesne. Like I don't think they're going to land on one, but they might. Every winnable um, game is on the island, but I bet you all the spreads will be close. Yeah, they could. They might be able to to beat New Mexico State on the road too. They 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 might beat Nevada at home. Uh, you know, they might beat Nevada at home or Wyoming at home. You know, or UNLV at home. Yeah, all these things. How? Yeah. Um. So. We're going to discuss week zero at some point, but. Hang on. Is Vandy is, going to the island or is this a neutral? Yeah. Trip? If Vandy's going to Hawaii, how Vandy. on earth is Vanderbilt laying points to anyone? Wait a minute, dude. We should, this might get weird. This is a weird thing to say because I was just going on about how they're unbackable. They might beat Vandy. This is a very <laughs> weird trip. It's a bizarre yeah. thing to do. To start the, the season. Mm. The number was was seven. Um, I think it was like seven and a half. I don't know what it opened at, but it's been seven for a couple couple weeks now. And now it's at a good six and a half. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna still take it. I'm still take it. I'm just thinking. That's is that? Yeah, I guess that is. Yeah, that does seem fair, right? Six and a half. But I mean, that's like what the neutral talent gap is. We haven't counted any points for going to the island. Or am I supposed to believe that Vandy is ten points better on a true neutral? That yeah, that's like isn't a that lot. wild. It's wild. It seems like a lot. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. Is West There's, Kentucky also going to the island? That's insane. Um, yes. No. That's insane. Who? Why are all these people agreeing to come to the island? Do Do they know where the fuck? They don't know where the fuck Hawaii is, do they? They have no idea until they agree, and then they're like, "Oh, this is a long flight." Yeah. You You know what? You're right. Like that Western Kentucky game is also winnable. What I hear for the for the Vanderbilt game is those kids are gonna go out there a week in advance to get oh! uh, used to the time zone. Because oh. they can hang out with Polynesian chicks. What? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> go native. Put on some face paint. Get out of here. <laughs> but the but the Western Kentucky kids, that's another story. 
that's another story entirely because they are playing um, – where's their week one schedule? Okay, so at least they're playing at home versus Austin P. But, you know, they are they are going to have to travel to Hawaii with none of that prep. And apparently Jared Daigie, who is – or was supposed to be the starter – or not, not – uh, Jared Daigie, yes, who was supposed to be the starter, is is transferring. Oh wow, a little bit of turmoil yeah. over there. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, but we, we might, should we might we should think about we should think about both New Mexico State and Hawaii uh, for for week zero. You know something? I think so. I think so, because these are teams that people don't want to touch. I don't want to touch them, but they make a lot of sense as bet on. All right, Timmy Chang, let's let's start your era off with a bang. By the way, if this team can start two and two, then things open up for them a bit. They're two and two, they can maybe get a road win at New Mexico State, three and two. Then they just got to pick off. They just got to pick off three people on the island. You got three or four games on the island. They just got to pick them right off. Or maybe went on the road to Colorado State and split it home. Then they could then, then they could go bowling. They've you know they've gone bowling every year. We've we've done a pot. Say what you will about mm-hmm. Todd Graham. He kept them in the postseason. Yeah, there's a lot of Polynesian talent. If you can keep them at home. Also, like, Jimmy Chang sounds racist. Doesn't that sound like a like a racist caricature? You know, from like maybe a 1950s movie or 1960s movie? Wait a minute, but Tommy Chong doesn't sound racist? Cha- uh, Tommy, Ch- Tommy Chong, well, I mean, Timmy Chang, that's his name. Okay, and that is his he name. must be of that is his name. So he is not a um, a racist caricature, um, but it sounds like one. Tommy Chong also kind of sounds like a uh, a racist character caricature. Yeah, they, okay, they both. What about, what about Cheech? It's Mary? the infantilization. It's the infantilization of the first name. Like if his name was Thomas Chang. Like he he might be like a um, an ambulance chasing lawyer. Tommy okay. Chong, sorry, is the yeah. So or or if he was T- Timothy Chang, right? These sounds like respectable people. But no, the, it's really but, funny. It's just, but using really the funny u- using the children's short name it just makes them seem you know less masculine um, and dehumanizes them. But it's their actual name. Less, less masculine. All right. If you weren't saying any of this shit about Billy Napier, so I don't even know where this is coming from. I already told him he's a bum. I told you he's a bum, and they made a mistake for hiring him. But but you yeah, but you Billy didn't say anything Napier about his sound like name. A racist. You weren't like he you doesn't. Like his... he's, it's not a. It doesn't sound like a racist caricature. I don't even know what ethnicity no, no. Napier is. Wait, oh, I see. So it's only infantilizing because it is an Asian surname. Cor- correct. Okay. I see. All right. Because, all right. Hey, that is one fantastic note to end on. <laughs> I, ho- what I, ethnicity, I hope you'll agree. Ho- let's, let, let, before we end the pod, let's find out what, what ethnicity the surname Napier is. Okay. Give, give me a guess. Um, I'm gonna guess he's he's Cajun. He, Quebecois. I bet you Napier is a Quebecois name. Uh, it is a British surname. It's British. Oh well. It's, well, surely it's Norman. Uh, it is derived from an occupational name for someone who sold or produced table linen. Oh my God, a napier, not napier, a napier, the guy who makes napkins. Oh my God, <laughs> a napier. That's 
hey, that's cool that that used to be a job. Fucking machines do that now. They used to yeah. be a man's job making napkins. Now what is a man's <laughs> job? A man's job is, you know, getting in front of a camera, shoving the dildo in inside and outside of himself. <laughs> now that's a job. We call it progress. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a good note to end on. Yes, sir. Dan only fan. 